This Friday is actually a biblical holiday called Pesach Sheni, the second Passover. That's right, it's the only holiday in the Torah that there's a second holiday. And that is because a group of Jews who were unable to bring the first Paschal offering and celebrate Passover on the 14th of Nisan in the evening requested of Moses a second chance. And God granted it to them one month later. And so today it's not really observed as like in biblical times. However, it is customary to eat a little bit of matzah. If you have leftover matzah from Passover, eat it this Friday to remember the holiday of Passover, the second Passover. And the very powerful lesson of second Passover, which is that God grants second chances. That in life sometimes we squander our first chance or we miss an opportunity but we could always bounce back and we could always be granted a second chance. As long as we truly and sincerely want a, a do-over, a second chance, God will grant it to us just like he did to our ancestors who requested and even demanded and complained to Moses and said, Lama nigara, why should we not have a chance to do the mitzvah of celebrating Passover just because we were ritually unclean on the first holiday and we were not able to bring the paschal offering or we were too distant from the temple to be able to bring the sacrifice now don't worry you don't have to clean your house and you don't have to get rid of all the chametz you could eat bread and matzah on this second passover because it doesn't have all the laws of seven days it's just symbolic today and even in biblical times it was not like the first holiday just they were given a second chance to bring the paschal offering now this is a very powerful lesson, especially as we're going through this coronavirus. Uh, one way to look at this experience is that we're pressing the restart button on our lives. We're rebooting our lives. And yes, there will be tragically a lot of losses, losses of life, most importantly, but also losses of businesses, losses of opportunities. But what we have to realize is that there's always a second chance. And when this is over, we will have to learn how to start all over again in some ways and regain re, re and restart uh, despite the setbacks and the disappointments and the losses that we've experienced. We'll have to rebuild our lives and our society and our communities. Uh, and we have to get inspiration from this holiday of Pesach Sheni that no matter what happened, you could always start all over again. A matter of fact, Eli Wiesel uh, talks about Adam and Eve and says, what was the greatness of Adam and Eve? What do we learn from Adam and Eve, the first human beings? And he says the most powerful lesson is that we always have to be able to start all over. Adam and Eve were in paradise. They squandered it. They lost paradise because they sinned by eating from the tree of knowledge. But even though they were banished from the Garden of Eden, they didn't give up. They started life anew outside of the Garden of Eden, despite the fact that the consequences of their sin would last forever. God said to them that from now on, by the sweat of your brow, you shall earn a living, that women will have to give birth through child uh, pain, birth pains. And furthermore, you come from dust, you're going to go to dust. But despite all those daunting proclamations of God and punishments for the sin that would have eternal ramifications, they were unfazed and undaunted and began creating life. And sure enough, they had two children, Cain and Abel. But then they faced a second horrific tragedy in their life. Imagine, says Eli Wiesel, waking up one day to the realization that one of your children were murdered and your second child is the murderer. How do you overcome the grief and the sadness of such a, an enormous tragedy. But yet, what does Adam and Eve do? They go and they have a third child, Shait. And here, once again, we learn from Adam and Eve that no matter what happens, God forbid something so tragic should ever, should never happen to any human being. But no matter what the disappointments, the setbacks, we have to have the courage and the faith to be willing to start all over again. And that's the lesson of the second Passover. Never say it's too late. It is never too late. God always grants second chances. It's a beautiful story I heard about a school in Los Angeles that was hosting their annual dinner. And they chose for a location a beautiful winery called Herzog Wineries, which is in Oxnard, California. It's like an hour and a half drive 
from Los Angeles. And this um, school decided that for entertainment, they would bring out a renowned violinist uh, by the name of Shimmy Wurzhandler. And he would come and entertain the crowd for this uh, beautiful dinner. And they would bring this uh, violinist all the way from Israel because he was such a renowned violinist and they flew him in to California, to Los Angeles to be able to uh, perform at their annual dinner. They sent someone to the airport to pick him up when he landed from Israel. And this person drove him to his home to get ready before they would head out on the drive to Oxnard, California to go to the dinner. The man put his little suitcase and his violinist, his violin into the trunk of the of the of the car that he was being picked up with, and they drove to the home in Los Angeles. When they got to the home in Los Angeles, he went to the trunk, took out his suitcase to go change and freshen up, but he left the violin in the trunk, thinking, "I'm going to need the violin anyways when I get to the to the dinner, so I'll just leave it in the trunk." He didn't realize that this family owned two cars because in Israel, most people, they're lucky if they have one car. So he went in, he freshened up, got dressed, and then they headed out to the dinner, the husband and the wife and the violinist, Shimley Wartz Handler. And uh, the, the two vehicles that they had were actually pretty similar. They were both minivans, similar colors. And so he got into the van and they drove out an hour and a half. When they got to the dinner, he goes to the trunk to take out his violin and he doesn't see the violin. He looks all around and it's nowhere to be found. He says to the host who drove him there, I don't see my violin. And he said to him, what do you mean? Where did you leave it? He said, I left it in the car when you picked me up. He says, well, that was my other car. Anyways, they said, what are we going to do now? To drive back to Los Angeles an hour and a half, back to Oxnard uh, for the winery. It'll be three hours with traffic. We'll miss the whole dinner. The man, Shimmy Wurzhandler, said he felt totally crushed, defeated, and humiliated. He said, here they flew me in all the way from Israel. My name was featured on the invitation as the star entertainment. I'm at the dinner, and I don't have my violin. What an embarrassing mistake. And sadly, he had to tell the organizers that after all their expense and all their planning, he let them down by making a silly mistake, an uh, innocent mistake, but a mistake, and leaving his violin back in Los Angeles. And no one had the keys except this couple to go bring the vehicle uh, back, so it would take three hours. And they had to announce to the audience what happened, and he was humiliated, he was embarrassed, and he said he, c he couldn't wait to leave Los Angeles and go back to Israel. He felt crushed. He said about eight months later, he's sitting with his wife at home, and his phone rings. And he looks at the caller ID, and he sees it's the administrator of the school, and he says, well, why is he calling me now? Does he want to uh, rebuke me for what I did wrong eight months ago. He picked up the phone, he said hello, and the administrator said, you know, we're having our next year's dinner in just a few months from now, and we were thinking who could be our entertainment this year, and we were thinking we would like to ask you to come back this year and be our featured entertainment. Shimmy said, he said, absolutely, I would love to come. Nothing would make me happier than to be given a second chance to perform. And he said he accepted the invitation. He went out to Los Angeles, this time made sure to carry his violin with him. He went and performed in front of all those guests that he was supposed to perform with before the year before. And he said it was the most redeeming feeling he ever had. And he said he thanked God and thanked the audience and thanked the administrator profusely for giving him a second chance to make up for what he had done, the mistake of the last year's dinner. And I think that's such a powerful lesson in life. Sometimes the greatest gift could be to get a second chance in life. I don't think there's a person who can say that there's nothing in my life I would not want to redo. If I could go back and remake that decision, I, would, I wouldn't make it differently. And we pray to God, God, give us second chances. Allow us to redeem ourselves. Allow us to get it right the second time. And if others have done something that have wronged us, allow them the second chance to fix, to correct what they've done wrong. And in a sense, we're all like Shimmy, words handler. Just like Shimmy was flown in from Israel to perform, every one of us, our souls were flown in directly from heaven to earth to perform, to perform certain roles and purposes and tasks and missions in this world. We all have 
a responsibility that we were called upon to fulfill in this world. And sometimes we let ourselves down, or we let Hashem down, or we let others down by not fulfilling the role that we were called upon to fulfill, to perform in this world. But Pesach Sheni, the second Passover, teaches us that God, if we are sincere and we pray and we ask, will give us a second chance to get it right. Whatever happens throughout this coronavirus, throughout this quarantine, let us see this as an opportunity to get a second chance at life, to re-examine our lives, to see how we can do better the second time around and start all over like Adam and Eve, no matter what we experience, no matter how challenging this moment in life is, we could learn from the courage of Adam and Eve that it's never too late to recreate paradise. We as a society will create a more beautiful paradise than we've ever had before. Have a wonderful day.